Hello, welcome to another session of the question and answers. And today we'll be going through some questions in topology and we'll try our best to provide answers to them. So please like the video if it helps you and please subscribe to the YouTube channel for more videos. All right, so let's take the first question. It says, given that we have this to be our A, so our set is 1, 2, 3, 4, and there is a topology defined on it. So our tau is phi A, then 1, 2, 3, then 1, 2, 3. So we have this um, topology here, which is a subset of which is a collection of the subsets of A. So the question says we should explain whether A is connected or disconnected in the topological space. So that means we have to know what either a connected space is or a disconnected space is because if it is not connected, then it will be disconnected. So solution. Note that for a topological space tau to be disconnected, then there should be two non-empty open sets u and v such that the intersection is equal to the empty set and their union is equal to the full set x and by in this set our full set was a so the full set a so you realize that when we take this our topological space here our non-empty open sets right proper subsets if i should take say our uh, this this here and that here and you realize that with these three that we have we do not have any of them that's when we find their union it will give us x or it will give us our e because in this case our set is a so you realize that um it is only this here and this here which are disjoint right so the disjoint open sets are only one and two three but when you find the union of these disjoint, they are going to give you 1, 2, 3, which is not equal to A. Because A is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4. So it means A is connected in a topological space, tau. So that's the solution to the first part of the question. This is very simple. Then the second part says, if X... Is given by this set here and a collection of subsets on it the topology is giving us this then we have to justify why this is or not a topology right so before we can make this justification we have to know what a topology is right so you remember that from our course in topology one we said for S style to be a topology then there are three conditions which have to hold and the first condition is that the full set itself x and the empty set should be elements or members of the topological space tau the second condition we give is that the intersection of all the elements in tau in our topology should also be in our topology and the third condition was that the union of all the elements in our topological space, tau, should also be in tau. So, you realize that this our topological space here. We have, um, right, so, let this be x, because our full set is x. So, we realize that we have phi here and x here that's a full set so that means the first condition is satisfied so this means the first condition is satisfied then we go on to the second condition so the second condition says that when you find the intersection of all the elements here it should give us something which is also here you realize that the intersection of this and this will give you this which is in the intersection of this and this will give you one which is here the intersection of everything here will give you something which is here when you also find the so that means the second condition holds right so 
the second condition holds and the third condition says that when you find the union of all the elements they should also be in a topological space tau so you realize that when you find the union of phi and x it gives us x which is here the union of this and this will give us x the union of this and this gives you one two three which is here so that means that s of tau is a topology so we've been able to justify that the topological space given is a topology so that happens to be the solution to question number two so let's take um question three say so state with reasons whether the topological space we have here is connected or disconnected so we have this to be x and we have this to be tau right so um we are supposed to find out whether this topological space is connected or disconnected and as i said we can make that decision based on the connection view or the disconnection view because if it is connected then that means it won't be disconnected if it is not connected it is disconnected and if it's not disconnected it is connected so we have this to be our x and this to be our tau so here i give a very simple explanation to it as you reason with what we've done so far we can also add up some to it so this topological space is connected because there does not exist a pair there does not exist a separation so you should know what a separation is a separation of x right that is two disjoint non empty open sets whose union is x do you realize that there are no two non empty disjoint open sets here whose union are x we don't even have um two non empty sets here which are disjoint so that means that there can never be a separation of x so our topological space s of tau is um connected so it's connected then question four question four says we should mention three examples of species that are connected um three examples so the real line is an example the topology sign curve is an example and the indiscrete topological space is also an example of a space that is connected okay so let's take another question so another question says that we should prove that if x is connected and if um you have a function f such that s maps onto y is continuous then f of x is connected in y so we are going to use contradiction to prove this so we want to suppose that f of x is not connected in y so since f of x is not connected in y then it means that there exist two open sets u and v that form a separation of f of x in y so that means so the statement that we made this is one mathematical expression for it that means that u union v is equal to f of x and u intersection v is equal to phi so the function f is said to be continuous right so we said our function f is continuous so since it is continuous then it means that the these two are open in x right so continuity in topology if you could remember all right so since this holds that means that f inverse of u union f inverse of v will give us f inverse of u union v but we know that u union v here is equal to x right so f inverse of f of s gives us the full set x then when it comes to the intersection f inverse of u union f inverse of v is equal to f inverse of u intersection v right so we know that u intersection v is equal to the empty set so that's what we have here and the inverse of it gives us um the phi right so when it comes here then there is a contradiction so hence our f of s is connected in y so we've been able to prove that f of x is connected in y okay 
So you can go through the proof. As you can see over there, it's very simple to comprehend. All right, so let's take a last example. All right, so the last question says that let's construct the Cantor Tenari set up to the third iteration and explain how it is generated. All right, so the Cantor set, the Cantor set. Um, it's very, very important and it's a disconnected space in topological spaces. Right, so in constructing the counter set, um, we use what we call the middle set. So we always take the close interval zero one. And since we are using middle third, we divide our close interval zero one into three equal parts. So you realize that we have one part here, another part here, another part here. And since they are equal parts, that means from here to here is one over three. From here to here, you see what three, and here from here to here, so, so what we can see then. So that means that um, the difference between all of them is one over three. So you can see that they are evenly distributed. All right. So you realize that to get our middle third, our middle third is that we take one from the left hand side, we take one from the right hand side, and what is remaining becomes our middle third. So that means that with this particular question. Um, in constructing the or generating the counter set, our middle third is one three comma two three, right? And we use this middle third to generate the formula for the counter set. So one by three c n equals one by three c um top three n minus one union. What you can see here, so you realize that this middle third that we found the opening interval one three one over three into over three. We're very important in forming our counter set. So our n is greater than or equal to one, and our c naught is the close interval zero one. All right. So the question said we should do up to the third iteration. So let's do for n equals one, n equals two, and n equals three. So that means we have to find for c three. Before we can find for C3, we have to find C1 and C2 using C0. All right, so C1 is given by this formula here because when you put 1 here, you're going to get C1 will be equal to 1 minus 1, so C0. Um, so that's the formula we see here, and we know that our C0 is given by the closing interval 0, 1. So the closing interval 0, 1, union 2 over 3 plus 1 over 3, the closing interval 0, 1. So, when we try to make some education here, you know, 1 over 3 times this will give us 0, then 1 over 3 union, we get the same thing here. So, when you add it to over 3 through the interval, um, you're going to get this here for your C1. So, now that we have our C1, we can use our C1 to get our C2. And the formula for our C2 will be this. So when you're making substitution, because this is our C1, we are going to get whatever we have here. And making simplifications and um, computing um, gives us this to be our C2. So the third iteration, our C3 is given by this formula here. I hope you know why. That's cool. <laughs> Alright, so you know this is our C2. So putting our C2 inside wherever you find this, we are going to get um a large equation. And when we make our computations and everything that we are supposed to do, we finally end up with this here. So this is the Cantor set C3 and the third iteration. Thank you very much. I hope you like this video and all the best.